welcome to this week's video. Now this week I'm going to do something a bit different. I'm going to review and rank five of the gigs that I've been to recently. But first I just have to mention this, I'm going to show you this. I am supporting Nick Kershaw at the factory in Worthing, which is on the south coast of England. Now I'm very excited about this. I, uh, been a big fan of Nick Kershaw's for years and in fact when I was about 10 years old I went to a fancy dress party dressed as Nick Kershaw. So here's the photo. I'm not sure whether to mention this to him when I see him or not um, but anyway I'm really excited about this. The gig is sold out so if you wanted to go unfortunately unless you've already got a ticket you can't. Um, so I'm not telling this to advertise it I'm just telling you this because I'm telling everybody. Now on to the gigs I'm going to review. I always think it's useful to get a review. I mean, if you see that this band or this artist is going to be on in your town, then it might be interesting to see a review to see whether you want to go. So I'm going to start off with number five, Marcus King. It was at the Kentish Town Forum, I think it's called, in London. So here's a little clip. Unfortunately, I missed the support band on this one, something which I normally try and get to see. It was Ida May, so they were meant to be very good, but I didn't see them, so I can't comment on that. Um, and so we were right at the back. I bought seats up in the balcony because there was seating up there and I didn't fancy standing for the whole gig. And I didn't see him, but apparently a friend of mine who was also there went uh, separately to me, he saw that the guy from Orange Amps was there, Aid Emsley, and I wouldn't have known what he looked like, but apparently he was there. And on stage there were big stacks, there was quite a lot of orange stacks, and uh, Marcus King had an orange one and a Fender one, so that was pretty cool. So it was an eight-piece band in all, there was Marcus, there was another guitarist, there was a bass player, a drummer, a Hammond player, and three brass players. And Marcus came on with a black Les Paul, looking pretty cool, with a cowboy hat, white cowboy boots. Now they started off kind of groovy riff. Um, the sound wasn't great, I have to say, but that might have been because right up at the back. Now, I love Marcus King, that's partly why I went to the gig, and I have to say I discovered him because of the guitar playing, because uh, you know, a lot of the stuff I follow is guitar based stuff, but I came for the guitar and I stayed for the singing because I absolutely love his voice. He's an incredible singer. But unfortunately, he didn't really sing very much. He'd sort of sing the beginning of a song. Then the songs would go off in a sort of um, what seemed like a 10 minute solo for every song. So for me, I would have liked to have heard a bit more singing. And strangely, his guitar playing, it was verging on kind of rock shredding. He was just playing relentless sort of fast 16th notes. Didn't have the kind of lyrical melodic quality that he's got on his records, which was a bit peculiar. The other thing I found a bit weird is he didn't really speak to the audience. He did a couple of bits where he spoke to the audience. It was almost like he was, this is book one of what you say to an audience when you go to the microphone. It's like, hello, great to be back in London. Oh, you're all looking great and all that kind of thing. But he didn't really speak to the audience. and. I'm only guessing actually that that's what he was saying because I couldn't hear a word he was saying. It was totally incomprehensible. Saying that, he's a pretty charismatic guy and he did look pleased to be there, but yeah, he didn't really, you know, he didn't sort of say thank you at the end of the songs. He'd walk off back to his stack and get a drink off the top and have a drink. Now, this was in complete contrast to the only other gig that I've seen at this venue. And this was about, oh, I guess it was about four years ago. I saw Keith Urban there. He was headlining C to C at the O2 in London on one of the nights and in the week running up to it he did this so I think it's two and a half thousand seats this venue and he played there and seeing an artist of that caliber and that profile playing in such a small venue was an absolute treat and I have to say it was a masterclass in how to talk to an audience he was so charismatic he engaged with the audience he was so personable and his fantastic songs I mean they weren't the these sort of protracted guitar solos, which, you know, some people like that, but uh, just Keith Urban, his fantastic songs, amazing singer, and such a charismatic performer, amazing. In fact, at the end of the gig, I mean, he's a huge star, isn't he, Keith Urban? At the end of the gig, he came off the, and stood at the front of the stage and signed all scraps and spoke to anyone who wanted to speak to him. He stayed there for absolutely ages until everyone had sort of, who wanted to spoke to him. But in Marcus's set, there were a couple of real high spots. Now, one of them, bizarrely, was that he threw in the first verse of Many Rivers to Cross as a kind of uh, little bit just before one of his songs. <laughs> Keeps me alive. I'm gonna lift across the fields. 
the other thing which I thought was a bit weird, there was a drum solo, quite a long drum solo, the rest of the band left the stage, and it was right near the end of the gig, it was about seven-eighths of the way through, I guess, and certainly where I was sitting, a lot of people left at this point, it wasn't only the band walking off stage, but lots of people walking out the venue, it seemed like a bit of a weird time to have a long drum solo. And then, also, and I can't remember if it was before or after, he introduced another trumpet player, now, unfortunately, I can't remember the names of, or I don't know the names of any of the rest of the band because as I say I couldn't understand a word he was saying but another trumpet player came on in addition to the three other brass players and he did this long jazzy trumpet solo and I have to say it didn't really fit with the rest of the set at this gig I did something that I haven't done for a long long time I left before it finished in fact I didn't even get as far as him going off stage and then coming back on for the encore I left before that and a friend of mine that I know who lives around the corner he left before the end as well the last time I left a gig before the end I went to see Return to Forever um, this was several years ago and it was the original lineup. So it was uh, Chick Corea, Aldi Miola, um, Stanley Clark, and is it Lenny White, I think, on the drums. Now, I'm not a fan of that kind of music, but I thought perhaps it's because I've never seen it live that I don't get it. So I went to see it live to try and, you know, get me really interested, get me into it. Unfortunately, I didn't enjoy it at all, but I did stay and I stayed for most of the gig. But then when Stanley Clark started strumming his double bass, I'm afraid that was just too much for me and I had to leave and get the tube home. Now, this is a bit of a weird one for me because I absolutely love Marks King's records. And I think mostly when you get artists like this, they're better live than they are on record. But there's something about the artistry and the songs and the musicality on his records, which maybe the producers got out of him, I think it's Dan Hour back, is it you say, from the Black Keys, who produced the last record, that sort of gets that out of him and says, no, play less on the guitar, sing this, a shorter guitar solo, sing this. I think they're fantastic. And live, for me, it wasn't as good as the records, which was a bit disappointing. And I have to say, I wouldn't go again. So there we are. I hope that doesn't annoy anyone too much, a slightly negative review, because I think Marcus King is absolutely fantastic. I love his voice, I love his guitar playing, but this gig, I didn't enjoy it. Coming in at number four, the Trucks Tedeschi Band. Now, this was just before Christmas at the London Palladium. Here's a little video clip that I took of Derek and Susan. <laughs> turned up there and I think nearly all of the musicians in London or the UK were there. I mean, I saw so many people that I knew. I mean, some of them I'd arranged to meet beforehand and uh, some of them there were other people they knew and there were people that play in the West End shows and they all depped their gigs out to be at this. I think it was on for two nights. So I think half of the musicians in the UK one night went one night and half the musicians went the other night and they all depped for each other. So it was a very uh, musician-y affair. There was a huge band, they got two drummers, they got a brass section, they got backing vocalist, Hammond, bass. Fantastic, it was a great sound, really nice venue as well. And it's very humbling to watch someone like Derek Trucks, well, when I say like Derek Trucks, to watch Derek Trucks, who is probably the best in the world at what he does. Um, you don't often get to see that, but his playing is absolutely incredible. I mean, I think it's the best guitar playing I've ever seen live, and I have seen Eric Clapton and I did see Jeff Beck as well but for me it was the most amazing guitar playing I've ever seen in life and also Susan has an incredible voice. That being said the band looked bored most of the time. Now I think at the end of this gig they were having sound problems. Derek and Susan kept going and talking to each other and they, they just had that kind of look about them and I'm sure I saw Susan sort of saying I can't hear myself. It was uh it, they did look bored and fed up. It was a bit uncomfortable, really. Now, similar to Marcus King, now this wasn't an additional person came on to play, but the sax did a sort of long solo. And again, it was a bit of a low point for me. I don't quite understand why, in this case, these two uh, brass players, they start doing solos and they're playing kind of really jazzy over what the rest of the set is all kind of bluesy. And they're playing in, it's like a completely different language. They're suddenly playing in a jazz language. I mean, it's like if you're going to a conference and all the speakers stand up and then someone, you know, they're all speaking English. Then one of the speakers gets up and starts speaking Icelandic or something and nobody can understand a word they're saying. Now, if you did the odd quote in Icelandic, kind of explained it, that would be interesting. It might add flavour, like someone adding the odd jazzy bit here and there. But five minutes of somebody speaking Icelandic and you not knowing what they're talking about 
quite frankly, the appeal wears off and most people glaze over at that point. I think that's what happened with this sax solo as well. But I have to say, I would definitely go and see them again um, and hopefully they'd be having a better night next time and look like they're enjoying it a bit more. Derek's guitar playing is just absolutely incredible. I could uh, listen to that all night and those long solos, it is so lyrical and so melodic. I could listen to it, oh, forever. Well, I don't know about forever. But anyway, yes, I'd definitely go again. Coming in at number three, I went to see The Pretenders at a venue called Chalk in Brighton. It was only a small venue. Here's a clip of The Pretenders. I filmed this one. This was one of the few hits that they did. Chrissy Hind is super cool. She is a fantastic singer, really charismatic. She was great in between the songs. And it was a great sound in this venue. Now the only snag was in the second song, the PA broke, it went off. I could hear it crackling in the first song. And then it just went off altogether. But it was quite funny, and this is one disadvantage of people wearing in-ear monitors, because the band just carried on regardless, because it obviously still sounded fantastic in their in-ear monitors. That part of the PA was still working, but the front of, the house, front of house all went off. They're rocking away, and the audience is just standing there. I mean, you could hear the drums still going and a bit of back line, but there was nothing else. There were no vocals, no support coming out. And the people in the front, they were kind of going, and she was looking at her going, what's the matter? What, you want us to stop? Because she didn't realize that we couldn't hear anything. Anyway, they chatted. They didn't go off stage. She sort of chatted, and not that you could hear her, but they sort of stood there and they eventually got the PA working fairly soon and then it didn't go wrong again and they carried on playing, which was great. The only other downside with this was they were playing a lot of new unreleased material, which I would have liked them to play a few more hits. I only recognised a few of the songs, but they did sound great. She was super cool. Um, glad I went to this one. I think I'd go again. Coming in at number two, Ashley Campbell and Thor Jensen. Now, if you don't know who Ashley Campbell is, she's Glenn Campbell's daughter. And... The first time I saw her, I think I saw her playing with her dad. But the first time I really remember seeing her was at c to c in London at the O2. And they had this little kind of, in between the main acts, they had these little stages where they had artists coming on doing a short set while they changed over the main artist. And she got up on there with either one or two, I think one of her brothers and another musician. Here's a photo of uh, Ashley and Thor on stage. Unfortunately, I didn't take any video here. It was a very sort of small venue. It was only, I don't know, probably hundred ish people there and I didn't really want to sit videoing it was a bit I thought it was a bit unsubtle so I just quickly took this photo and she is a phenomenal banjo player she's a phenomenal guitarist a phenomenal singer and she also played one of the songs that she wrote and if you haven't heard this song I urge you to check it out go and look, watch the video on YouTube the track is called Remembering and it's all about her dad getting Alzheimer's um, it's a kind of song to him there's loads of home movie footage of her growing up with Glenn and every time I watch it, I seem to get something in my eye. My eyes keep watering every time. But I urge you to go and watch that. It's absolutely fantastic. Now, this gig, um, Thor, who she was playing with, this duet, du duet, no, duo. Well, she did do duets with him as well. But this duo they formed, she went for guitar lessons with Thor. He moved to Nashville, and she was looking for someone to teach a kind of Django-style uh, guitar. But apparently, Glenn was a real fan of the style and works it, and she thought... She loves the style as well, and she wanted to learn how to do it, so she found a guitar teacher, and it was Thor, who hadn't long been in Nashville. Anyway, they hit it off, um, and they form this duo where they play together, and they write stuff together as well. And I have to say, it was one of the most virtuosic, I think that's the right word, performances, and I actually said this to them afterwards. Uh, it was one of the most virtuosic performances, but it was also it was incredibly musical. They're singing, they're playing, it was amazing it was the playing was fantastic but it wasn't it, it was still really musical it was amazing the sound was perfect they were brilliant in between the songs and I went and spoke to them afterwards um, and I got my photos taken with them and what pleased me most was uh, Ashley looked over and she went oh I like your jacket that made my day it really did 
um, and I bought a t-shirt which I've worn in one of my videos before but absolutely fantastic if you get the chance please go and see them they are absolutely amazing and finally coming in at number one James Taylor here's a little clip of James playing you've got a friend this was one of the sort of last numbers he did um, I don't know it captures the great sound that was in the room but here we are Yes, there's one that will be there to brighten up even your darkest night. You just call out my name, and you know wherever I am, I'll come. see James Taylor at the Brighton Centre. I think I got the last ticket. It had been sold out for a long time. Um, it had been postponed, I think, twice. And I saw on Facebook that someone had seen him in London and someone said, he's on in Brighton next week. I went online. In fact, I think it was even the same week. I went online, not knowing that it was sold out, thinking, oh, I'll get myself a ticket. I'll go along. And it said, tickets available. And I was like, oh, that's weird. And then it was on one of the balconies. It was right at the back, but in the front row, on one of the balconies. So I, I didn't, bother trying to find out if someone else could come with me I just bought one ticket and bizarrely when I got there there were two seats next to me I was the third one in two seats there and there were two women and they were at a conference in Brighton and they walked into the box office at the same time I was on line buying my ticket and apparently what had happened was somebody gave back three tickets they were at the box office they were told they had to wait until the person who was online had finished their sale which must have been me i bought my one ticket and they bought two tickets so i could have bought two but i didn't want to wait so i just bought mine and i was just lucky i got this last ticket and i've never seen james taylor before even though he's one of my very favorite artists i play loads of his songs when i play live and i have to say this was probably well it was one of the best gigs i've ever been to it was absolute masterclass. I mean, he's got probably the best band in the world, Steve Gadd on drums, Mike Landau on guitar, I mean, and all the rest of the band. I mean, it was, and all of those great songs. His voice was amazing. His guitar sounded amazing. Everything about it was incredible. James Taylor comes on in a sort of pair of chinos and a kind of Oxford shirt, looking like a retired geography teacher. But somehow, He's just so rock and roll. He, his stories in between the songs are hilarious. I mean, he's just brilliant. If you haven't ever seen him and you get the chance, go and see him. It was absolutely brilliant. I could go and watch him every week. It was fantastic. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video. It was something a bit different. Hope I haven't offended anyone by it. I can't just be positive about everything if I didn't enjoy something. I think an honest review is the best thing to, to do. And, I enjoyed all the gigs, I'm glad I went to all of them, but there were certain things I didn't enjoy in all of them, as I've just pointed out. But, still keep going to gigs, I'm going to keep going. I've got some other things booked that I'm going to, I'm not going to mention, I think I might save that, but I'm going to see an absolute guitar legend very soon. Anyway, not sure what I'm going to do on my video next week, maybe back to some more guitar nerdery or something along those lines, but... Please hit subscribe, hit like, leave me a comment, let me know what you think of these reviews I've just done. I'm bringing out new videos 7pm on Friday UK time, so I'll hopefully see you next week.